Tara Khalil, and I'm a civil rights clerk. My name is Alina Ali, and I'm a civil rights intern. My name is Caitlin Taylor, and I'm a government affairs intern. My name is Suzanne Falenchkowski, and I'm a communications intern. My name is James Scheipel, and I'm a government affairs intern. My name is Evan Gellis, and I'm a civil rights intern. My name is Mansoor al Junaidan, and I am a research fellow at the research department. Rana Khatib, communications intern. My name is Gabriel Gamis, Jr. I am an intern in outreach at CARE Chicago. My name is Abla Harib, and um, I'm interning here at CARE as a paralegal. The future looks mighty good. We are now in a new threshold uh, for America. Being Muslim and being American are not these two polar identities that uh, clash. Uh, rather, uh, there are ideals within the concept of being American and being Muslim uh, that work together harmoniously effortlessly. We've grown as an organization. We've increased, we've hired a new staff attorney, Rabia Khan. We've added an extra communications coordinator and our number of steady interns at any given point has surpassed 20. So any given point of the year we have at least 20 interns in our filling our office space, you know, providing that extra support we need to sustain and serve the community. very proud of the fact that we have had from the very beginning a mandate to serve and to do so professionally. That has been our hallmark. Uh, we strive to meet corporate standards, uh, but with a non-for-profit spirit and a non-for-profit culture. And that unique mix, I think, is what sets CARE Chicago apart. Everyone in this office is from a different background or a different ethnicity. It's just the unity together. That's something that, that I look forward to, to coming into the office. That I, what I see in the office is what I hope for in the outside community. When I help tell someone's story who's been discriminated against, I feel connected to it because I feel like I'm helping tell part of my own story, my own American Muslim story. And I'm helping weave the fabric of an American society that we are a vital part of. I think part of the reason why we see such a negative representation of Muslims in the mainstream media is because there's a lack of education and misinformation about Muslims. Whether it's movies or television or even textbooks, I think it's important to challenge these negative representations and provide more fair and just images of Muslims. I mean, it's the Civil Rights Department, it's the backbone of the organization, because we're here to help the Muslim community here in America fight and protect their First Amendment right to practice religion as they freely choose. We were contacted by Mrs. Gusan, who is the mother of Sherzad Gusan. Her daughter attends high school and she is an active member of their junior ROTC program for the Air Force. And recently, after coming back from winter break, Sherzad decided to wear hijab. The chief came up to me and he told me that I can't wear this, like, that I can't wear the scarf in a uniform. He told me that it's either I take the scarf off and stay in ROTC or they can just move me to some other gym class instead of ROTC. I'm not gonna choose to take off my scarf. Like, I would never do that. However, that conflicted with, apparently, with her JROTC uniform requirement. We advised Shirzad that she needs to apply for a waiver with the Air Force. After dealing with significant delay, um, as far as different requirements that were placed on them by the JROTC program. Ultimately, we were happy that this Situation was resolved amicably for everyone involved and we're very proud of Shirzad for serving her country and staying committed to her religious beliefs. My mom was right. CARE is the best. We sit up for religious freedom with CARE Chicago. This year we had a major success in our citizenship delay project. We represented Masood Masumi Dejad, an Iranian uh, national who faced numerous barriers obtaining U.S. citizenship. I went through a lot of hostilities through these two and a half years to gain my citizenship. And then, you know, CARE Chicago helped me a lot to get through this problem. And ultimately, we were able to obtain success on that point. USAIS uh, admitted that they had uh, improperly processed his application and ultimately granted him U.S. citizenship. First, um, help, helping from God, then Care Chicago. Mr. Najad's situation 
reveals how, how much discretion USCIS has in granting or denying citizenship applications. Care Chicago acts as a check against that type of discretion. We ensure that USCIS complies with their standards and ensures that everyone who is entitled to US citizenship within our community obtains it. I hope, I hope that our organization continues to grow and expand and that would only be possible through community support. Follow due process. Due process is not exactly something that you talk about. So looking forward, you know, we want to expand our vision of helping the community fight Islamophobia, fight bigotry. And we can only do this if we continue expanding, continue growing. Right now, our attention is so focused on the Chicagoland community, and we've slowly expanded that, both nationally as well as internationally. We have staff traveling around the country speaking on Islamophobia, speaking on bigotry, as well as traveling abroad to fight for the same injustices that American Muslims are facing fighting for those same rights for people abroad. Of the future without bigotry.